morning, children of God. Welcome to worship today. Uh, it's uh, hard to believe that Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. I mean, like Christmas was like two weeks ago, wasn't it? <laughs> it, just, it feels like it was just here. Uh, maybe it's because of the snow. Or maybe it's because we still have our lights on, I don't know. <laughs> but Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. Um, and we will have two, there's two services available to you. The 4.30 service is at Zion. The 6.30 service is here. It is the same service. So whatever works best in your time. Um, it's where we do the imposition of the ashes and also communion. And it's, it's kind of a neat time of year. It starts off, us off with Lent. So after this Sunday, we won't be able to say Alleluia till Easter. The liturgical police will be out. Um, a couple of announcements. One that's not in the bulletin. Uh, today in Carlton at the fire hall is bingo, and everybody's invited. It's cash only. It's from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, the Lenten services and, and Ash Wednesday and all are on the back of the bulletin. A women's Bible study is still meeting in Zion. Um, those are the main things going on right now. Uh, did I miss any announcements that need to be brought up? Okay, looking good. One other announcement I just want to mention for anyone who needs it. We do have... Um, We've had a couple of requests for gluten-free wafers, and we do have those available now for when you come up for communion. So trying to, trying to uh, be friendly, you know, to accommodate people. Um, okay. Well, let's begin our worship then on page three. Please stand as you're able. We invite the Holy Spirit to be present as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For your name's sake and the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is 834.
please stand as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. found on the front of the Celebrate insert, we pray together. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 24. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there. I will give you the tablets of stones with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm responsively, repeating the refrain at the bulldar. Why are the nations in, in uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt, and the princes plot together against the Lord and against the Lord's anointed? Let us break their yoke, they said. Let us cast off their bonds from us. God, whose throne is in heaven, is laughing. The Lord holds them in derision. You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Then in wrath God speaks to them and in rage fills them with terror. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You are my son. This day have I begotten you. 
You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear and with trembling bow and worship. Lest the Lord be angry and you perish in a sudden blaze of wrath. Happy are all who take refuge in God. You are my son. This day have, have I have begotten you. Begotten. The second reading is from Second Peter chapter 1. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have... We had been eyewitnesses of their majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to them by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have, ha so we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no matter, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will. The men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. We begin with a gospel acclamation in the middle of page five. Alleluia. This is my son my chosen. Listen to him. Alleluia. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o you may be seated. Would any of the kids like to come forward? If not, I'll just walk around anyway. <laughs> In fact, I might anyway. High fives? Oh, you can snack it. Come on. Yeah. High five? Thank you. <laughs> High five? Too old? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is like show and tell. Do you guys have show and tell at school? What, what kind of things do people bring? Do they bring like puzzles or toys or pictures or different things? Well, I've got a picture I want to show you. My dad was a pastor. He just died recently, but he was a pastor for almost 70 years. That's a long time. 
And this picture hung in his office, and I remember it from when I was a little girl, and now it hangs at the parsonage in my office. And this is a picture of Jesus. But it's a little different than what we usually see, isn't it? What are some of the things you notice? He's holding a lamb. lamb. Uh Uh-huh. And um, he doesn't have the usual robe that we think of, does he? He's kind of different colors, and it's pretty amazing. This was kind of the artist's idea of what Jesus' glory looked like. And glory is kind of your inner being. Um, and who you are in Christ, what your spirit looks like. And so this picture is, is a, the artist is very famous. The artist is named, has a last name of Salmon. And a lot of times you'll see a picture of just the face of Jesus by Salmon. But this is the only time I've ever seen this particular picture. It has a scripture verse on it, and it was actually signed by the artist, so it's kind of special. And it's dated back 1960, so that's like a million years ago almost. So I'm gonna, I'd like to show this to the congregation. Would someone like to carry it with me? Okay, I'll do it all by myself, but you know, my feelings are hurt. Come on. It's just such a special picture. Most people have never seen it before. You ready? Deb saw it already. <laughs> so we'll stop here. Isn't that unique? In our scripture lesson today, we'll come around and get it. In our scripture lesson today, we're going to learn about Jesus and his glory. And this is how one artist kind of pictured things. Let's see. We'll catch the side aisles too. Thank you for your help. It's a lot easier this way. Oh, let's see. Catch these guys back here. We'll hit this side aisle and then that side aisle so we can catch everybody. And then they don't all have to come over to the parsonage and see it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but I was just kidding. Okay, we got to switch sides or something. There we go. I guess it's hard for you to see, Nicole. We caught you in the middle, didn't we? <laughs> see that? It's kind of different. It is unusual. I mean, how do you draw somebody's glory? You know, how do you uh, draw their inner light? Okay, we need to catch those guys on the end of the other aisle. You need a quick glimpse as we go by. (laughs) You ready to help me up the other aisle? Okay. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this before, have you? I've never seen any other copies of it. It's like number, I don't know, 400 and some that's been signed, so. Okay, thank you so much. I think we're ready to head back and we'll have a prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for showing us your glory and helping us to understand that you are much more than just a man, but you're the Son of God. Help us to always live for you and to, to share and to love others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for coming up and letting me do my show and tell. Would you like a snack? I'm not sure, but that might be the motivation. Whoops. Anyone else? Colt Wallen? Okay. Will this bother you if it's there? No. Okay.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now when our oldest son, and he's not been here to Nebraska yet, but when our oldest son was five years old or so, he woke up one morning on a foggy day, and he peered out his bedroom window, and he was fascinated because it was so foggy. The clouds fell down last night, Mommy, he declared. Indeed, there's truth in those words. Fog is very similar to clouds, but it forms near the earth. Jesus took three of his disciples up a high mountain by themselves, just the four of them having some quality time. I wonder if the disciples questioned Jesus' intentions. Did he have a secret mission just for them to do? But on the mountain, while they were watching, Jesus revealed his glory to Peter, James, and John. He was transfigured. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes were dazzling white like light. The Greek word that's used is metamorpho, to be transformed. It means to be transformed, transfigured, or to change in form. You can see where we get our word metamorphos from, from the Greek word metamorpho. This week I was reminded how blinding it is when you're outside and the sun is shining on that fresh, sparkling white snow. And I wondered if the disciples felt that way when they saw the brilliance of Jesus. When they shut their eyes, I wondered, could they still see that brightness, that light, even with their eyes closed? Was that brightness of the transfigured Messiah temporarily imprinted on their mind's eye? And if that wasn't shock enough, two men appeared with Jesus. These two men did not acknowledge the disciples who were observing them. Instead, they spoke directly to Jesus. They knew Jesus. And this is one of the most powerful things in this passage. Think about this. These two figures, Moses and Elijah, that lived long before Jesus was born to Mary, recognized who Jesus was in his transfigured form. And Jesus knew them. Like most Israelite men, Jesus would have studied the law and the prophets and the writings. But what is being revealed to the disciples and to us is not just Jesus' knowledge and understanding of the law and the writings, but his familiarity with the prophets themselves. And Elijah and Moses and Jesus knew each other because Jesus is, and Jesus was, and Jesus will always exist. Jesus was present at creation, and he will be present for all eternity. That is powerful. Jesus revealed his glorified state and his eternal nature to his disciples. And Peter, trying to be helpful, offered to make shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. But before he could even get all the words out, a bright cloud covered them. Or as my son said, a cloud fell down. But this was no ordinary cloud. It was filled with light, with the presence of God. It's similar to what the Israelites experienced as they watched Moses ascend into a cloud. According to Exodus 24, now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. In other words, God's presence was in the cloud that surrounded Moses and shone like a fire to those outside of the cloud. So this is a bright cloud. And from this bright glowing cloud on the mountaintop, God spoke to the disciples and said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him means to hear, to pay attention, to understand, and to obey. Now overcome by fear, Peter and James and John fell to the ground. It was a sign of awe before a heavenly revelation. They had encountered the presence of God. 
So Jesus revealed his glorified state and his eternal nature to the disciples, and God spoke from a cloud and confirmed Jesus' identity. There can be no doubt for the disciples and even for us at this point who Jesus really is. Jesus is the Son of God. It's been revealed, his eternal nature has been shown, and God spoke from a cloud and confirmed it. Now after a moment, a gentle touch and reassuring words from Jesus, get up and do not be afraid, caused the disciples to look up. The extraordinary had once again become ordinary. They only saw Jesus, and it was time to go down the mountain, back to the real world. Jesus ordered them to keep silent about what they had seen until after Jesus was raised from the dead. Raised from the dead? I can imagine the three disciples trying to piece together in their minds what they had just seen and heard, and Jesus puts his little tag on it, raised from the dead. It had to be mind-boggling. Now Jesus had brought the three disciples to witness the transfiguration and the meeting with Moses and Elijah. And these witnesses also heard the voice of God confirming Jesus' identity. That fulfilled the Jewish law that said you must have two or three witnesses for something to be legal. Folks, Jesus is the real deal. He is the real deal. The author of 2 Peter, which presumably is Peter, confirms that he was an eyewitness of Jesus' majesty. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. These nine verses in the Gospel of Matthew clearly, clearly show Jesus as God's son who existed for all time. Jesus died for our sin and he was raised from the dead. Isn't it amazing? The Savior who changed in the presence of Peter, James, and John is the one who changes us. We are transformed in Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. As the church of Jesus Christ, we are on the after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead side of the gospel. Therefore, we are encouraged to share the vision, to tell the world that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus was revealed in his glorious, majestic state when he was transfigured before his disciples. Jesus' external existence, I'm sorry, Jesus' eternal existence was confirmed by the personal encounters with prophets who lived long before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And the voice of God from the cloud confirmed Jesus' identity as the Son of God. Now you may wake up one day and discover that a cloud fell down. Whether the cloud represents grief or illness or anger or failure or disappointment, depression or whatever, remember the God who speaks from the cloud. Pause and listen for a voice in the cloud reminding us that God is present with us and confirming that Jesus is God's beloved son. That gives us the hope that we need. Amen. We continue our worship with hymn 631, I believe. Yes, 631.
stand as you're able. We continue our worship by confessing our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed, and it's found on page six in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. session are found on the back of the Celebrate insert. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, dwell with your whole creation from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster and relief agencies around the world. Merciful God, guide and give wisdom to all in authority to our local leaders, our governor and state legislators, our president and vice president, national legislators, 
Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, or isolated. Especially we pray for Rod and for Irvin and for Everett and Adam, and for Jan and for Riley facing surgery, for Perry, for Joanne, for Brett, for Laverta, for Gail, for Josh, for Michael with cancer, and for Dan, also cancer, and for Deb. We pray comfort for the friends and family of Dale Arns and for others who have recently lost loved ones. And we pray for our homebound friends and family, for Bert and Carolyn and Helen and Edna and Loretta and Fern and Theora and Margaret and Bonnie and Howard and Deanna. Merciful God, make us eager to receive your word and scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice and the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And as you feel comfortable, you may share Christ's peace with each other. may be seated for the offering. Please stand as you're able. the offering prayer on the top of page 8. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give away to your own brilliant light. And so with all the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table, for all is now ready. You may be seated. of Christ given for you. The body 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 of Christ given for you. given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
May Christ's blessings be yours today and always. Amen. Jesus loves you and he'll love you all your life. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. God's blessings be yours today and always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 given for you. Let's see. You take communion? I thought so. The body of Christ given for you. So do you take communion yet? Yes? The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Our hymn is 318.
the way of Jesus.